Greetings and welcome to In Depth. I'm DK Rostar. The College of Science, Technology and Applied Arts of Trinidad and Tobago, or COSTAT, is very proud of the cohort of lecturers and administrators that they possess. One such is the Chair of Fine and Performing Arts Department, Nadine Gonzalez. Now, Ms. Gonzalez is off the clock at COSTAT, but is currently adjudicating at the Trinidad and Tobago Music Festival. So we are hoping to have conversation on both COSTAT and the Music Festival. Thank you for making the time, Ms. Gonzalez. I want you to start off telling us a little bit about the Fine and Performing Arts Department, please. Thank you for having me. The Fine and Performing Arts Department at COSTAT has been renamed and is now known as the Department of Creative Industries and Culture. And we are housed under the Ken Gordon School of Communication, Creative and Digital Media. We offer programs in certificates in music, associate degree, and if we have a cohort to continue through to the bachelor's degree in music. Our instruments of specialization are guitar, voice, piano, pan, woodwind, brass, and percussion. And with that, and you're going to have to tell me that name again because I went and looked plenty places and it's the same name again, but you'll give me it so that we hopefully we can change it while we're going through, please. But what is the unique selling point? What is the positional edge? Where's that place that you pride yourself on saying that you get this at Costat? The rest of places, not so much. At Costat, we are dedicated to providing work-ready graduates. We provide the opportunity for our students to study in an environment where we focus heavily on the practical application of the art. So while you will get music theory and music history, survey of the music industry, where we will tell you about um, your copyright and um, how, to, how to market yourself. We also offer courses such as computers and music, but we really do focus on the application of the art so that when you come to us and you're a singer, we take that very seriously and we hone that skill. And I like that because, so, I'll, and I'll, let me poke fun at myself. I have a general two in Spanish CXC, but um, that didn't necessarily prepare me after, especially after the gap of not necessarily using it for buying vegetables in the market when I went to other places where it was a lot more Spanish than anything else. So that practical application, I think, is so, so important. And looking at that fact, that term, work ready graduates. But with that in mind, though, who are the ideal students? Who are the people who want to do X so they should find themselves in that department? The people who want to be rounded singers, who want to study different genres of music, should come to us. The people who are already in the industry as professionals, who already work the cruise ship industry, who already work as um, professional calypsonians, professional contemporary singers, they can come to us if they have not already explored the opportunity to certify formally, to give themselves other options of careers. And that's one of the things I wanted to ask about, because sometimes you find yourself, okay, well, I'm already doing it. Why I need to go to school for them to show me the same thing I'm doing? So that last point that you made, extra, expand on it a little bit, please. The point of um, being able to, to yeah, formally... Yes, so you're already, you're already in the industry. But you decide, okay, mm -hmm. well, I'm coming to cost that. I'm coming to this department in order to is, is certify, you say? Yes. If you want to go into the ministry as a music teacher, you're not necessarily going to get in there with your experience alone. You need to show that you have attained a certain level of understanding of the music theory so that you can impart that knowledge in the classroom. It gives you more career options. If you're a performing musician, there's nothing that stops you as a performing musician from performing. But it's opportunities and, and different experiences that we want to bring to these students that we have so that when they move on, they have other career options. And what, what are some of the things that you enjoy the most sitting where you are, having these individuals pass through your hands and saying, okay, well, I, I had a hand in that. What are some of those things? Well, we are in the business of shaping dreams. 
And it is, it is very interesting to watch a student when they come in and when they journey with us and to see where they are when they graduate. That for me, that transition that they experience, that life transforming experience that they have with us is what gives me a lot of joy. Oftentimes we have to guide them along the way because they're not sure how to get to where they want to go. In fact, sometimes when they come to us, they don't even know what they really want to do. They just know they want to do something. So they come to us for guidance on where to start, how to navigate. And in terms of that navigation, in terms of shaping those dreams, is it possible to say, okay, well, I'm majoring in something else, but at the same time, I'm interested about this, so let me, I can do this course, so I can do, I can do this, undertake this piece of study at the department. What is that experience like? Because I know sometimes prerequisites this and have to do that and streams that. So what is, what is that experience like to be able to uh, cross-pollinate, as it were? So in our music programs, especially at the, at the level of the associate degree and the bachelor's degrees, they have three elective credits where they can do courses from anywhere in the college. So if they have an interest in special education, they can pursue a course in that. They can pursue a course in ECCE or a course in psychology or even math while pursuing their course of study in music. And do you find that is something that many people take the opportunity of doing? Because it, it seems as though if you look at it, if you expand your horizons, is able to go anywhere, but sometimes people kind of have this narrow view of what the arts is supposed to do, what the arts is supposed to offer. Uh, is that what is that part of the dreams that you help to shape? Yes, um, we've had music majors who wanted to do something in graphic design because they they see themselves being able to market themselves in a particular way if they if they participate in some of those classes. So it is complementary for them to consider some of the things that will expand their, their base so that they can function more optimally when they're in the workspace. And with that, we get into the other side of the conversation. When we return from the break, we are speaking with Ms. Nadine Gonzalez of Costat. And uh, stay with us. We, we come back with so much more. Welcome back. We are speaking with Nadine Gonzalez, Chair of the Department of Creative Industries and Culture at Costat, looking at how Costat is fostering the arts, helping to carry it forward. But outside of Costat, Soft Normas Gonzalez, what has your experience been with the Music Festival 2024 thus far? The Music Festival, the Biennial Music Festival so far has been inspiring. It, it is awesome being able to work with so many upcoming musicians and it is an honor for me to serve in that capacity. I wonder if you're doing some poaching, saying, hey, no, you could continue this here, you know, I want, I want to see that cost starting a little bit. You don't need to answer that, but I know that you didn't have to, but you carried out an impromptu workshop with some students. What led you to do that? On that particular day, several of them demonstrated the same challenges. And those were um, challenges with the uprightness of their body, what I, I call the correct frame of spine for singing. And they had issues with diction, and it was easy for me to fix it at the time. So I took the opportunity, and I really cluttered the schedule a little bit at the time, but I couldn't let the opportunity pass to help them to understand how quick and easy it was to fix some of those technical proficiency issues. Um, some of them were harder to fix, but the ones that are easy to fix on the spot, I was able to give them that experience toward having them understand how to practice and how to better prepare for the upcoming festival again. And what were some of those quick fixes? And I say that because I want to quote Peter Tell for a blessed mention who says that Practice do always make perfect, but many times it's make permanent. So this kind of consistent delivery of something or implementation of something, it makes it hard to change just because you're so used to doing it. So what were some of those kind of quick fixes in terms of like that frame of spine and possibly some other technical things that you would have taken individuals through? And he was absolutely correct. Um, practice makes permanent. It also makes prepared. So. Some of the things that we quickly were able to fix, they would hunch over some of them and the sternum will collapse. So 
All they needed to do was stand a little more upright, and it's also easier to access more breath support if you if you stand properly and understand how to take in breath and how to exhale. So many singers made the mistake of breathing in like this and breathing out, but your lungs are not in your shoulders. So we have to relax the shoulders and tell them that it is okay to extend the stomach a little bit and the, the torso in order to inhale. And when they exhale, it deflates. So that was one quick fix. Another quick fix is bringing the lips a little more forward and keeping the lips more rounded. Um, I'll give you an example. So if they're singing Pia Yesu, you don't want to go Pia Yesu. You would prefer Pia Yesu. That's an example of how to easily and quickly adjust the face in order to get more forwardness and more projection. Oh, Ms. Gonzalez, you tell people trying to look cute, you tell them about or oh, expand so that the stomach, so that the stomach, and diaphragm, nothing. I want to, <laughs> I try to fit a suit inside. <laughs> but what, what was what was that, what was the feedback like? Because I can imagine for some individuals, it's almost as though scales dropping from their eyes. We're like, wow, I didn't know. This was so easy. And at the same time, it's so, yeah. But what was that feedback like for you? Um, many of them were surprised at how easy it was to fix and how quickly we were able to get a different result from them with minor adjustments. Um, I always tell people that uh, vanity breathing is not for singers. Maybe, maybe for another sport or maybe bodybuilding, <laughs> but not for singing. So you can't actually keep your stomach flat and intake a breath and sing well for a prolonged period of time. And in your experience, though, how easy or how hard is it to get that sort of individualized training from a facilitator or instructor? How easy it is to get it? Um, well, all singers are at a different point. Fundamentally, we all have lungs and diaphragms and, and lips and tongue and teeth, but not all of us understand how to utilize them and how to coordinate all of those muscles in order for it to work optimally for us. So... Um, I believe that um, Dr. Tang Yuk also took the opportunity to, he's another adjudicator, he also took the opportunity to, to give them some guidance and a bit of a workshop when he adjudicated some of his classes as well. So in the festival, we are trying to give them as holistic an experience as possible and provide guidance for going forward. If you're asking about the access to um, vocal coaching, we do have several certified people who can provide guidance for singers in need. And I'm glad you answered the question in the way that you did, because it also makes me want to ask to you, how important is the music festival in general to the landscape of Trinidad and Tobago? And you, and you frame, frame your par for parameters however you want. The music festival is it's a very vital part of the development of a, a young musician. It provides an environment for experiential learning, where they can actually have an experience that is positive toward their holistic development. Uh, we try our best to ensure that the, the adjudication, that we provide comments for them, and that we support them and encourage them to continue to learn and to grow. It's a biennial festival so that they have another couple of years to continue to, to hone those skills and come again. And one of the things I'm thinking about, because, and even the way you just said it, comments is different from that workshop and that experiential learning. And I think it's so important to get an idea of what other individuals are doing. Because I remember, and this was this is when you could have still run through the slats at, at Queen's Hall for, for, for Music Festival, before, before, the, before the renovation. And looking and saying, hey, they're doing that? How come we're not doing that? And it, give, get, it gives an idea of where you are relatively, because some people is the best thing in the bathroom, you know. But you don't know that there's a whole <laughs> wide world out there. And these are what some of the things are, and these are some of the things that you need to work on. Because sometimes if you're in your, your own small little bubble, 
and everybody's telling you what you want to hear and you're the best thing, not realizing, okay, well, I might not be able to grow if all I'm hearing is one set of information. And with that, though, and do, did you see a lot of that happening? Because you spoke about one other person, but did you see people taking in other individuals and looking and saying, okay, well, hmm, all right, I still have a little bit to go, or what, what was that like for you? Um, some of the younger performers weren't able to stay back to look at some of the more the more seasoned singers because they had to go back to school. But they will have that opportunity in the championship round, which starts on Monday of next week. I have found generally that the uh, the audience participation it's very very limited this year, and and you are correct that that all performers should actually have a gauge as to what they should expect and how they should expect to grow. And, and yes, the festival provides that opportunity for them to gauge where they are at and where they need to go. So hopefully some of the younger ones um, and the ones who are still in more of a developmental stage than the others can come and experience what they should expect in the future for themselves as developing musicians. And in the future, they can also see themselves at Costad. Let's go back to a little bit of Costad right now. Uh, because I think <laughs> one of the things that you spoke about was short courses, because not everybody wants to do an entire degree or certificate. Well, let's, an entire degree. There may be one specific thing that they're working towards that they want to add to the resume or, or add in their repertoire, the toolkit. What are the opportunities for an individual like that at Costad? So for individuals who want um, a foot wetting experience, so to speak, we offer single course certificates. So let's say, for example, you want to come and learn to play the drum kit. You can come and do that one course and move on, or you can do that one course and it may inspire you to stay on for the bigger certificate, which has like five to seven courses in it. And that certificate that is five to seven courses is part of our associate degree. So those who complete that certificate will get advanced standing into our associate degree. And our associate degree is the first two years of the bachelor's degree. So we do allow for incremental growth and it caters to those who may have financial constraints, who might have time constraints, who may have commitments in their lives. They may be older. They may need um, a second chance at life. They didn't have an opportunity when they were younger to come in and, and do studies in music um, formally. But maybe at the age of 55 or 60, you discover, hey, I really need to learn this creative side of myself. You could come and do one single course with us, have that experience. And then if you so desire, you can move on to other single credit, single um, certificate courses, or you can stay and enjoy a longer program. And I really love that in terms of saying, okay, well, you're building, but you're building on a modular level because sometimes you may have an associate degree and you're not able to take that and matriculate into the into the, the, the longer degree as opposed to saying, okay, well, we cut you some slack as opposed to saying, no, this can dovetail directly into this. But we want to thank you so much for the work that you are doing as well as the entire team at Costat. Chair of the Department of Creative Industries and Culture, Ms. Nadine Gonzalez, thank you so much. And on behalf of the entire news team, I'm DK Ronster. This has been In Depth with me. Thank you so much for joining us.